Hey, I'm Dan Thomas, and I have a problem. I've never been good at moving things small amounts with my hands. For instance, with my drill, it's either slow or full out fast. It makes it really hard to attach bits the way all the cool people do. If I'm playing a video game and I have to walk slowly across a narrow beam, I'll be falling and cursing in no time. <laughs> Seriously, that's me. And if I have to move my fence a small amount, forget about it. I tap it a little and it won't move enough. I tap it again and it goes way too far. And then I'm not even sure where it was in the first place. I've had solutions in the past, but I was never really very happy with them. Well, I'm happy now, so stick around to find out why. I've actually got three solutions, and they all use indicator gauges. You can use an analog or a digital one, whichever you prefer. You put the gauge next to the fence, with the pin pressed in some. The trick is figuring out how to get the gauge to stay there. This one's using movie magic, which unfortunately isn't real. So that's where the three solutions I'm going to show you come in. But before I show them, this is how you use them. Cut your piece just a little oversized. Without moving the fence, position the gauge and zero it. Then unlock the fence and tap it over a little. The gauge gives you tangible feedback of how much you moved the fence. It's not so much about the exact number, at least not until you're trying to shave that last little bit off. It's mostly about did you move it at all, or did you move it way too much? And if you did move it too much, the gauge makes it easy to move it back and try again. After a while, the numbers start to make more sense. Make a test cut and see how close you are, and repeat if needed. It usually only takes me two or three times to get it right. Of course, you could try to measure the exact amount you need to move it, and you're welcome to try that. But to me, this is quick and easy. The first solution works on any kind of tabletop, but I'll admit it's kind of ugly. I screwed the gauge into the side of a piece of scrap plywood, and I set it on a piece of tool drawer liner. Tool drawer liner comes in rolls of various sizes. I got this roll for around $10. This stuff is great. If you put some pressure on it, it really doesn't move much at all, even on this relatively smooth cast iron top. So when I put the scrap wood and gauge on it, it stays pretty much in place. But if you have any issues, you can put something like a brick or some pipe on it. But in general, it works pretty well by itself. If you decide you want to attach the liner to the wood, don't use glue. Glue just seeps through the pores, and it actually ends up more slippery. But this works fine as it is. I said it wasn't pretty, and I was right, but who cares? It works. The next solution is this magnetic base. I got this one for pretty cheap at Harbor Freight. Turn the switch to engage the magnet. If magnets stick to your tabletop, then this will stay in place. You use it pretty much the same way. Place the pin against the fence and engage the magnet. Zero the gauge and you're good to go. Here's how you attach the gauge. Loosen this clamp to move the arm up and down, and bend it out like this. On the end of the arm is a clamp. Loosen it and take it off. There's a pin here that should slide right out. You don't need it for this, so just set it aside. We're going to stick the gauge in this hole, but the outside swivels, so make sure the large holes are lined up. Stick the gauge in all the way. Make sure the fat part of the pin is all the way through the hole. You might need to turn the clamp to get it in far enough. Then put the clamp back on and tighten it. Move things around until they're in a good position for you to use. With the gauge at an angle like this, technically the readings won't be perfectly accurate, but they'll be plenty close enough for this use. This one works pretty well, but the next one is my favorite. I love this jig because it's simple and elegant. It's got a magnetic switch I got from Amazon, and although they have cheaper switches, I like this one because it's plenty strong. I've got the magnet just shy of flush with the base, so I know it won't scratch anything if I drag it around. The gauge is attached with a machine screw, so it's easy to remove the gauge when you need it for something else. I've got a build article on my website, so rather than go into details in this video, here's a short montage.
Well, that's it. I hope it was useful. Don't forget to check my website for the build article and links to products and other relevant videos. And remember to thumbs up, comment, subscribe, and all the usual stuff. Thanks.